Global energy security will be a key issue at the G8 summit this year. Africa has its own energy concerns. Most households still use wood fuel. In our next story, we meet a man from Mali who's trying to solve this environmental problem in a unique way. Dinner time is approaching in Mali's capital, Bamako. And in Seydou Traoré's house, the food is almost ready. It's been cooked without charcoal, which is strictly banned in this household. Seydou uses a new kind of fuel called briquettes, which he invented. They are made of cotton stalks, which have been burned and then pressed into balls. I am at home with my family and we are preparing food using these briquettes as the energy source. This is my kitchen and we are using the briquettes like other families in Bamako. If we use the briquettes to cook breakfast, lunch and dinner daily, one bag will last an average of 20 days. The briquettes work very well. A very small quantity is enough to make food. The best thing is that you don't have to fan the flame. It burns slowly with a small flame. 92% of the energy consumed in Mali is used in private households and by far the most common type of fuel is charcoal. Seydou Traoré's idea is to gradually replace charcoal with a more eco-friendly source of fuel. I started working on this technique in 1998 and I am in the process of increasing the production little by little. The briquettes are a substitute to wood and my objective is that people stop chopping trees to make charcoal. In 1996, the city of Bamako was used in the equivalent of 600,000 tons of wood. We tried to forecast the consumption until 2010, but already last year it had more than doubled and reached 1.4 million tons. The briquettes don't just save on trees, they also burn slower than charcoal and don't produce any smoke. Sounds like the perfect renewable fuel, but the fact is that making the briquettes does produce some carbon emissions, and it's a pretty lengthy and costly process. This is a workshop where we make the briquettes. The cotton stalks, which have been made into powder, are mixed with molasses, a byproduct of sugarcane. The machine turns and the mixture solidifies into briquettes. They are put into a wheelbarrow and when it's full, we take the briquettes out into the sun for drying. Briquettes cost a lot more to produce than charcoal, but thanks to subsidies from the American Development Fund, which paid for some of the equipment, Seydou can sell a sack of his briquettes 50 cents cheaper than the $8 that a sack of charcoal costs on the market. Charcoal and wood are still used all over Africa to cook food and heat water. In a sense, trees are renewable, but you need a lot of wood to make charcoal, so the effect on the environment is devastating. It's a global concern. At this year's G8 summit in Russia, President Putin has put energy supplies at the top of the agenda. World oil supplies are running out, and more and more, energy is becoming a source of conflict. In the long term, renewable sources of fuel are the only solution. At the moment, 80% of the energy used worldwide is still from fossil fuels. 
here in Mali, Seydou's briquettes are still a long way off replacing charcoal, but there's already a big social impact. In Kura village near Bamako, a women's association collects and sells the cotton stocks to make the briquettes. One advantage is that it protects the bush because we are not chopping trees to make charcoal anymore. Then financially, it's good too because we earn money from the stocks for the association. With it, the women can take care of their families, the children, the husbands. It pays for the school fees, the food, the medicine, and the whole family benefits from it. Today, Seidu is coming to fetch his supply of cotton stocks for the week. The stocks have to be burned or carbonized before they can be used. It's done here on site. We fill the three tanks with cotton stalks. Then we crush the stalks, put the cover on and set fire to it. Little by little, the fire gets stronger and the color of the smoke changes. Then we cover the last holes and that's it. The cotton stalks are carbonized. Carbonization is the art of burning without turning it into ash. Now that Seidu has mastered the technique, the next step is to boost the sales. And it's a real challenge. People don't know the product well yet, and the competition is tough. Drama Kona sells charcoal and briquettes on the Bamako market, and the numbers say it all. Drama sells 200 bags of charcoal and five bags of briquettes a month. <laughs> The briquettes last longer than ordinary charcoal. It might work in the future, but it will take some time because people are not used to it. Alimata Ba knows that changing consumer habits isn't easy. By day, she's a student, but in the evenings after her daily prayers, she becomes a briquette seller. She's been hired by Biomass Mali to boost briquette sales. First they gave me a sample. I went to show it to people and then I gave them a few briquettes for free so they could try them out. Then I was given bags of briquettes to sell. People understood how to use the briquettes and they started buying. Alimata strongly believes in the product's qualities which makes her a very successful saleswoman. As to yesterday, she sold 21 kilos of briquettes. In Africa, and more specifically in Mali, new products don't sell fast. People prefer to wait and hear from the ones who have already bought to find out if the product is good or not, and only then will they buy. Whether or not our children and grandchildren have the natural resources to fuel their lives will depend on how well we safeguard them and what alternatives we find for the future. But money is still the deciding factor. So until sustainable fuels become cheaper than fossils, people might not warm to them until it's too late.